What's up everybody? It's Jeffrey Lyles welcoming you to another installment of Lyles Figure Files. It's June, it's the midway point of the year, and I've decided I'm not going to wait till December before I start talking about the great job all these companies are doing with these figure lines I'm collecting. It's not all great, so that means I've got to talk about some of the negative. What better point of the year to do that than the midway point? And this way I can give a progress report, say what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong, what they need to fix. So maybe they can rise up a little higher in my end of the year rankings. Today I'm going to start looking at Mattel's WWE line. Now that becomes a super major tongue twister every time I keep trying to say it. WWE line. So they've got all these various subsets. I'm only focusing on the Elite, the Legends, and the Ultimate Edition. Those are the lines I collect. But they do have some other really cool ones including those great vehicles, the ring play sets. There's some really good stuff there. Anyway. It's been a strong year for the elites. They put out four so far. And I think, by and large, this has been some of the best elite lineups they put out in terms of the execution. Now, normally I'm going, yeah, I just want the flashback. But I think in a lot of cases, specifically with 90 and 91, there's been a lot of, eh, I don't really collect these modern guys, but that figure looks cool. I'll go ahead and grab it. And they've done pretty well on that end. I think the pricing... They have held pretty steady. They've seen an uptick, but they haven't gone as dramatically as, say, Hasbro's. And for the most part, they're $21.99. I don't mind that price point in 2022. I know everything is going up, so I expect figures to go up as well. And at $21.99, I'm okay with that, especially since a lot of the retailers that have these WWE figures in surplus actually put out a lot of sales. So anyway... So we've got that. And another controversy or challenge they've had is they're running out of new names to sign. So we're seeing a lot of the same characters repeated over and over. And with the Legends line, it kind of gets tricky because it's like, dude, we just got a Jake the Snake Roberts figure. Why do we have another one in this Legends line? With the Legends, I don't mind it so much because that was part of their thing. Everybody was rocking colorful outfits. It wasn't until the Attitude Era where everyone decided, let's just wear black, that it became born with their outfits. But with the Legends, I'm a little bit more lenient because they can give different looks, different colors, different colored tights. And because they changed their gimmick up so often, it wasn't a case of, hey, man, I've only got this one X-Pac. I mean, geez, how many Sean Waltman figures could they do? with One, two, three, kid, and X-Pac. So anyway... They're doing a pretty good job navigating what they have available, but there's still so many characters, so many guys, so many name ones that I'd really love to see that just aren't in the pool anymore for Mattel to make new figures of. But I think the biggest controversy they had in 2022 so far was the Chief J. Strongbow and the Rob Van Dam figure. Rob Van Dam was supposed to be supposed to have a chase with his Elite 91 figure. It was probably one of his more iconic tights uh his airbrush tights with the rising sun it's a really cool looking outfit and he's worn it several times and mattel revealed it and i was really excited about that chase like yes that's gonna be a great one to get but it was quietly canceled no real official announcement from mattel and i guess it was because of the rising sun and how that would be interpreted by some countries that get these figures I wish they hadn't shown it just because I would prefer never have gotten my hopes up about it and then not to get it. And Rob Van Dam has so many different tight combinations that it's not really a big deal. But it's kind of this thing where you'd like to see all the people that would cancel figures intervene a little bit earlier than, hey, here's a figure we're going to put out. All right, so we got him. And then there was a Jay Strongbow. And that figure is kind of worse because it had gone through so much of the production process. We saw the promo. We saw the great production photos. In some cases, collectors actually got them. And then it was, wait a second, this could be something that would make people want to cancel us. And then it was, then it was canceled. And I'm not a big fan of some people getting them just on the regular and other people going, hey, I'll pay a thousand dollars to get this figure for something that was available for 20 bucks. And it's just not fair, especially in one case where a former WWE superstar knew, got a little heads up that, hey, you may want to get this figure soon because it's going to be canceled. And of course, you got it and then sold another one for a lot of money. That's how it works. That's not cool. But 
for the most part, Mattel has done pretty decent in terms of getting figures out to us. So let me break down all these different categories. First up is availability. And I think this is so major and so important because as we see with so many other lines, it's like they're, they're ghost towns. Like I can't go into the stores right now and regularly see Marvel Legends, but I will definitely see a steady collection a full peg worth of WWE League figures and the Legends figures will be on the shelves and there's never a situation where I go to Target or I go to a Walmart and go, where's the WWE guys? They always have them on shelf and I think that when a new wave comes out, you know, you may take a couple weeks, but they'll eventually get there. When the Legends figures hits on Target's website and they're like, hey, they're available in your area, they're actually on the shelves and you can get them. And for the most part, you don't have to worry about, oh man, if I don't get them right now, I'll never get another shot at them. The stores in my area are doing really well. If this is not the case in yours, let me know. But I just feel like I never have a problem getting WWE figures. I freak out. I panic. Oh my gosh, I can't get this Ultimate Edition Batista right now. And then I wait two more weeks and he's everywhere at every store. So I really think that's been a great job for Mattel because especially in this point where gas prices are like $20 a gallon. Nobody wants to run around vainly searching for figures. And the WWE figures are consistently on the shelves, just like you'd want them. So for that one, I'm giving them the full Monty, an A plus on that one. Great job, Mattel. And then I decided I also want to do a top five. And that's just my five personal favorites. And I think these figures are really good representation of what they've been doing so far Three, I'm kind of cheating because they're the Ultimate Edition and they should be better than some of the other ones. But I finally got my 1997-98 version of The Undertaker. That figure is great, really fun to pose, you know, just interact with Bret Hart, Stone Cold, Rock, everyone from that Attitude Era. And then the one right next to him, Ultimate Edition 11 Kane, The Brothers of Destruction, got them both in one wave. And both those guys look great. And I think... They had a little bit of an issue with the Kane figure because for some reason they decided, hey, let's uh, not paint the elbow and not paint that mask properly. But I got to give Mattel credit again because it was, oh, shoot, we messed up. OK, listen, we're doing a run and change on that figure. But if you got one of those botched versions, send us an email, send us a picture of your your botched elbow with the non paint and we'll send your replacement. And I got my replacement elbow and head and i was like that's what you do when you make a mistake own up to it fix it make it right by the customer and i think they did a really nice job on that end so that's another bonus for them on that so those are the first two ultimate edition figures and my top five is in no particular order here but the next one is the ultimate edition legends batista love batista in the white and red and this is the attire from Batista that I've wanted from Mattel for a really long time. And to get it in Ultimate Edition with super articulation so he can do the Batista bomb full out, all our, all that extra articulation. Another one that I think is probably going to be a bit of a surprise is the Cowboy Bob Orton, the Legends figure. I had that original tag team version with Roddy Piper. And I was very reluctant to get this one. I was like, why do I need this figure? But it's so much better on every level. First off, it's got the double jointed elbows and that has increased the playability of these, posability, of these WWE figures tremendously. He comes with boxing gloves so you can simulate his Saturday night's main event boxing match with Mr. T. That's a nice bonus. They actually fixed his hat. The original one was a little bit too tall. They actually sized it properly and didn't just reuse it. Uh, they done, did the TrueFX face printing, so it's a little better likeness as well. And he's got blue tights. He's not in black, so he's still got a little color to him. So overall, really great figure. And Target was clearancing these bad boys out, so I got him for like 7 bucks. It was a super sale and a really great figure. Last is Mean Mark Callis. It's one of those figures I was never expecting to get from Mattel. This is... Pre Undertaker, WCW, Skyscraper version, and I'm really excited about this. Of course, now I'm like, yo, what's up with my Dan Spivey? I need him ASAP so I can team him up with the Psycho Sid and with me, Mark, so I can have both versions of the Skyscrapers. So 
that was a really cool figure, really unexpected, and I think shows how far Mattel can go when they decide, hey, we don't need to stick to just one era of the character. We can go to their past, to their WCW, their AWA tenure, and did that in a figure form. And that's really cool. It's something we definitely need to see more of. So overall, that is a strong top five. So I'm giving Mattel an A on that one because they actually had some pretty good competition for this. There was the Elite 91 Bianca Belair, the Sami Zayn figure, the Bronson Reed. I mean, there was a lot of strong competition. I easily could have done a top 10 and had no worries, no questions about including those figures in there. The Damian Priest figure as well. The Elite 91 Hogan. I mean, there are lots of good options. So really strong early portion of the year for the releases for Mattel's WWE line. So full A on that one. Not A plus, but an A. Next up, the worst one. I really thought hard about this one because I was torn with, should I put that Jay Strongbow figure on this? Because this figure should be on, on a list of best figures, but because we didn't get it, maybe it should be worse. But I decided to go with something that everyone can get and not be excited about like me it's the build-a-figure SummerSlam Dominic Mysterio and I get that it's kind of a cute funny gimmick but when I think build-a-figures I'm thinking a figure that can actually add to my collection whether that's the Fink, Mean Gene, Vince McMahon, John Laurinaitis, JR I mean those have been some of the build-a-figures we've gotten in the past Dominic Mysterio is a kid version it's funny it's a like ha ha that's great but it's not something that, that makes me go, I need to get all these four figures to build young Dominic Mysterio. And I just think that outside of the, hey, that's a pretty funny thing. Who's your poppy? That one note gag. I'd much rather have another figure, someone else from Summer Sam's, Summer Slam's past glory. Maybe a Diana Smith. That would have been kind of an interesting figure. You know, let's let's keep the family together, Brett. That would have been a cool one. Not Dominic Mysterio, who doesn't say anything. He's so little. And I know there's the novelty of, hey, we've got a child Dominic, and now we've got the wrestling version of Dominic. But for me, terrible option. Not something I want to do with the Build-A-Figure, especially because those Build-A-Figures are a little bit expensive. And I don't care about Dominic. There's a young version, and not too much an adult version. So that for that one, I'm going to give them a D for Dominic. So let's keep going. And I'm going to go with the biggest announcement next. And I think this one was so important because Mattel cannot keep up with the whims of Vince McMahon where he decides, oh, I want to fire this guy and this girl. Let's get rid of him. It's impossible. And I think Mattel has finally realized we can't do this anymore. So if we've got a figure in the pipeline, we're not going to do like we did with that Legend 7 Sting figure. We're not going to cancel him. We're going to just release the figure and still put him out. And that means we've gotten that Elite 92 Adam Cole long after he showed up in AEW. That was cool. Not so cool is the fact that I still haven't found that camo chase version. But that's a pipe dream and it's like whatever. But I imagine some of you have, so good for you. So we've gotten him. We've gotten Scarlet. We've got Karrion Cross. A lot of these guys, Bronson Reed, we're still getting their figures even though they're gone. And that's a really important key thing because... I mean, there's some tag teams that get split up and then it's like, well, what are you going to do? And they're still putting them out. So that's a nice step in the right direction. And I'm really happy to see that. Totally giving Mattel an A plus on this because, you know, we want to see these figures. We've been watching in WWE, NXT, and if they get fired before they get their figure, it kind of sucks. Even more so when we start to see that tease of, hey, we're that close to getting it. And then we don't. So for that, total A+. All right, so for the worst trend, it still has to be not getting the figures made fast enough. There's so many cases where a guy will be in there for months, be in NXT for years, finally get to the main roster, gets fired two months later, and then it's like we still don't have a figure. We still don't have an elite figure of this guy. Like, I don't know how we didn't get a swerve figure. We got that basic, and I just kind of feel like their priorities are still out of whack. Nobody's getting by the basic figures. They're the one constant figures on the pegs. And I feel like they need to focus on getting those new characters. Those first time in the line guys done in elite first and then push them over to basics later. Not the other way around. And it's just, it's 
they've got to be a little bit more aggressive in getting new talent that's signed to WWE, made in a figure form way faster. Don't go with the old formula of, well, it depends on how much TV time they have. Can't wait on that. You just got to hope that they don't get fired uh, before they get cut. So for that one, I'm definitely going to have to give them an F because too much time has passed. It's a long established trend at this point. And Mattel needs to go a little bit faster in cranking out these figures. So for the July and through December outlook, that's next up. And this is one where I think on their end, it's reason to be excited. And first up, because of the Ultimate Edition 13 Hulk Hogan. This is the signature early, mid-80s Hulk Hogan. This is the one that you can fight against all of your 1984 through 1986 figures. And he looks amazing. He's got all these different head sculpts. He's got the super tan going, buff. Looks like Hogan from that time frame. And this should just open up the door for more Hogans from 87 to 90, 90 to 92, and just open up those floodgates. But this looks like a perfect figure, and I think they've done an amazing, amazing job on it. I can't wait to see this one. Can't wait to get it in my hands. It's probably going to be a day one purchase, review, get excited. Put it the centerpiece of my mid-80s WWE collection because he's so great. And Mr. T is coming with him in that same set. Really nice looking job on that figure as well. And yeah, I'm just really excited about those two guys. And we've got another Jeff Hardy figure coming. He's long been gone from WWE, but they're still cranking him out. we got a Roman Reigns Ultimate Edition coming as well, finally. And that's an exciting figure. And we're right on the edge here of comic con which means we should see a lot of new stuff from them as well as the next crowdsourcing project the rest of the year of course means at some point in 2022 we'll get our hands on that new generation arena ring setup and the ultimate edition macho man diesel and doink really excited about those and i think mattel is going to work really hard to make sure that ring is the ultimate experience so when it's time to start pushing that next one, we'll be excited. We'll sign up. I'm really looking forward to seeing what they're going to do next because that ring was set of really nice, great incentives and really made it worthwhile to get. And I think they're going to do that again with this next year's for, for next year's that we'll see at some point in the next few months. So for the outlook for July through December, I'm going to give them a full A plus because I think the horizon is very exciting for Mattel's wwe line all right well that's it that's my breakdown i think with the a pluses the a's and they've got some f's and d's hanging in there too and they might have to give them a strong b plus i think once that hogan is in my collection that's gonna bump him up right away to a minus but that ring could really set things up for an a plus looking forward to diesel and Macho Man, of course. Of course that doink, because I think he's cool. We're going to see more Ultimate Edition Legends. we got that Macho Man figure coming. So I think they're going to really turn the corner. There shouldn't be too much movement now in terms of people leaving WWE. We'll probably see some movement on a Cody Rhodes WWE figure again. So that's something to look forward to. But I think overall, Mattel is on the right path. They're getting their figures out. We're seeing them. Outside of a couple cancellations, everything we see, we get on our shelves. And that's really all I want as a collector. And it's a good breakdown of everything they've got coming. So let me know what you think about these, these progress reports. What grade would you give WWE for their Mattel line? And let me know what you want to see me break down next. Thank you as always for watching. This episode of Lyle's Figure Files has been filed. Mm -hmm.